Since the dawn of early civilization, healers, doctors and surgeons have been amongst the most prominent members of society. No other profession is as benevolent, prestigious and above all desirable. This isn't just a profession, it's a way of life. A life ruled by a love for people. However, along with its prestige, come the very tough obligations and responsibilities which can only be mastered through hard work and self-dedication. An average person may become a hero if they save someone's life and the story will most definitely be all over the news. On the other hand, for a doctor, being someone's hero is part of their daily hard-working life and there is no greater satisfaction as a gleam in the patient's thankful eyes. I've been wanting to become a doctor ever since I was a kid and since I started off here I've developed a great interest in the field of cardiothoracic surgery. I want to specialize in uh, interventional cardiology and um, yeah, I just hope to become a very good doctor. The field of medicine is, uh, has lots of opportunities to help others and uh, it's also, especially in India, it's uh, I think there's a huge need for doctors who can serve the people, so uh, medicine is a really good choice and uh, I hope to do that in the future. It's no wonder that humanity has gained most knowledge in the field of medicine, since we have always been interested in the most important part of living, our well-being. This greater knowledge in medicine has also shown its effect on the age span of humans. What used to be an average life expectancy of 35 years has now grown to 80 to 85. However, the hard work that goes along with master in this field has also grown. The knowledge in medicine which used to fit into one book during the time of Hippocrates and Avicenna now make up enormous libraries with detailed information on specific parts of health. More importantly, overwhelming number of books are added each year to these libraries with new and groundbreaking discoveries. This is why it's so important that the education system in medical universities be wisely and adequately planned. Students should earn a high quality of education in general medicine and learn precisely what is necessary for common practice. Postgraduate training should provide detailed knowledge and skills in a special field chosen by the doctor, be it paediatrics, cardiology, ophthalmology and so on. It's a wonderful opportunity for medical student as we get to go to different specialized hospital for each subject. Since I'm in fourth year, I'm doing my clinical skills now and we go to different hospitals, work with different doctors and it is a very really interesting and educative experience to work with them. The medical education system of the Soviet Union, parts of which are still widely used today, is based on outdated standards. Besides the fact that the theoretical part of medicine was scant, Disciplines which are integral parts of contemporary medicine, such as genetics, immunology and behavioural science, were neglected. In 1989, we founded the Physicians Specialisation Fund PSF, in order to establish international standards of medical education in Georgia. This fund soon became the first private medical school in the post-Soviet Union region, known as IAT. This was practically a new seed in the ground of education for the medical society in Georgia, in which almost all leading Georgian academicians took part. The name Aeti holds a symbolic meaning. It's the name of an ancient Georgian king, the father of Princess Medea, a famous healer of the time, whose name gave origin to the word medicine. Uh, I came here on the recommendation of some of my friends. Uh, this university is in Tbilisi, Georgia, and this country is a very beautiful country, and the people are very friendly over here. Uh, in the beginning, when I decided to come out of a country alone, I was a bit scared. But once I came here, I get to know different people. I met my friends, and I mean, I made new friends, and I see different people around. I got to interact with them, and I don't know how these six years passed so fast. In just few months, I'm gonna graduating, and like I'm already started missing this country a lot. Georgia is a small country, located between the Black and Caspian Seas neighbouring Turkey and Armenia in the south, Azerbaijan in the east, and Russia in the north. It is listed among the top 10 safest countries to live in. You will find every sort of terrain with beautiful landscapes and mild climates, from mountains peaking over 6,000 metres to deep canyons, subtropical forests rich in vegetation, and even to a desert. I love the snow here. Like I, Before coming here, I have never seen snow. 
so it was very nice seeing the snow here. Tbilisi is the capital of Georgia and it's the largest city in the country with a population of up to 2 million people. It is an important hub on the re-emerging Silk Road linking Europe and Asia. Tbilisi is a modern European city with a strong cosmopolitan identity and a long history of being home to a variety of ethnic and religious communities. It's easy to find your niche when visiting Georgia. From its history and culture to modern living, you will find hundreds of ancient monuments and archaeological sites to discover, as well as wonderful nightlife in Tbilisi to relax and enjoy in your free time. All this makes Georgia one of the most desirable tourist destinations. My name is Tera Sharafidze. I graduated from David Vildiani Medical University in 2013. Currently, I'm enrolled in Emory University Hospital Neurology Residency Program. My name is Nina Karashvili. I graduated from David Vildiani Medical University in 2013. Currently, I'm enrolled in Palmero Health South Carolina University Hospital Neurology Residency Program. The PSF sent some distinguished and honourable young doctors to the United States with a mission to master modern educational methods in theoretical and practical medicine. These young doctors later became the cornerstones of the new educational curriculum in IAT Medical School. Hello, I'm Nana Jinjolava. I finished IIT Medical School in 2007. Currently, I'm working in New York City, Mount Sinai Hospital, as rheumatology doctor. My name is Dr. Tamar Bejanishvili. I graduated from IIT Medical School in 1997. I'm currently uh, working as an internal medicine doctor at University Hospital of Cleveland. I'm also a faculty of the residency program here. My name is George Zerudiani. I finished IIT Medical School in 1998. Since 2008, I'm working at uh, Centauri Norfolk General Hospital as a hospitalist. I am Dr. Katina Gurgenishvili. I graduated from medical school IET. Uh, I did my residency at Drexel University. At the moment, I work at multi specialty group practice as a general neurologist in Pennsylvania. My name is Omar Chikovani. I graduated uh, IET Medical School in 1998. At the present time, I am a pediatric intensivist at Children's Hospital of King's Daughters, Virginia, Norfolk. The fund bought a whole library of contemporary medical textbooks, questionnaires and visual aids to educate new students with up-to-date material. In 1991, a new educational program was created based on the requirements of the US licensing examination. The main goal of the program was to prepare doctors to successfully pass these examinations and get an opportunity to train in residency programs in leading US hospitals in their desired fields of study. In September of the same year, the institute accepted its first 60 students. Fifteen of these graduates were able to efficiently pass the very difficult license exams and are now employed in leading medical centers in the United States. So what I like most about the university is the curriculum and the student-friendly environment. The curriculum itself focuses on USMLE and will be helpful in clearing almost all our competitive exams. The schedule for the year is quite organized and well planned. So every day we have a particular topic to prepare and that is very helpful because um, every topic and subject is uh, equally, um, equally planned out so we can memorize enough for throughout the year instead of focusing on the end of the year. So I think that's very helpful for students. Our university also focuses on MCI and USMLE coaching because of which it is greatly beneficial for us to write their exams. And also our university is recognized by the MCI and the WHO because of which we can go back to our uh, country and write the exam. And I focus on writing the exam and uh, I think about uh, building a career back in India. After graduating from here, I would, I would like to go back to my country, appear for my MCI exam, and hopefully I will pass that. And after that, uh, we know that medicine is a very big field, so I would like to appear for the higher examinations also there. And if not possible, I would like to explore other options, like because already we have been in a different country once. We know how to be in a different countries, and we know the opportunities we have in US, we have in London, we have in Australia, and Dubai. So there are different entrance examinations, so maybe I will prepare for them and I will try to continue my education there or if I have the opportunity to continue it in India, 
I will be very happy to be a part of my country and serve it. I'm hoping that I would be able to write USMLE and clear it with flying colors and hope I could achieve a residency in USA. The high scores earned by our students in these exams are in direct correlation with the high quality and effectiveness of our program. Most of our students have achieved the highest possible scores, the results of which are phenomenal, even to US prominent medical school graduates. A few years after IAT was established, its diplomas were verified by the World Health Organization, WHO, followed by the Medical License Committees of the United States, Europe and Asia. During the course of the institution's short history, IAT has prepared over 600 highly qualified doctors. Over 200 of these doctors have successfully obtained foreign licenses and are currently working and holding high positions in different medical centers over the world. One of them, Nana Kobaivanova, is the medical director at the world-renowned Cleveland Clinic, a famous treatment center for presidents and prime ministers from all over the world. I'm Dr. Nana Kobaivanova. I graduated Ayeda Medical School in 1997. Currently, I work as a medical director at the Cleveland Clinic Family Health Center. Um, hi, my name is Nino Mikaverize. I graduated IET Medical School in 2003, and I'm working as an rheumatology fellow at Wild Cornell Medical Center, New York Presbyterian Hospital. I'm Anna Egriselashvili, graduated from IET Medical School in 1998, currently work at Hillcrest and Marymount Hospital at Cleveland Clinic System at S Internist. I'm Thea Chalitza, I graduated IET Medical School in 1997, currently I'm in employed as internal medicine physician um, with University Hospitals Health System in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm Rajan Kutelia. I graduated IIT Medical School in 1997. Currently, I'm working as a hospitalist at uh, St. Aranofo General Hospital. Uh, I'm Tina Narcia. I graduated from IIT Medical School in 2004. Uh, currently, I'm working as an internist hospitalist at Ahuja Medical Center. Hi, I'm Dr. Irak Limania. I graduated from IIT Medical School in year 2000. Uh, since uh, 2008, I work as a psychiatrist at Keystone Health, located in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. My name is Maya Nijaradze. Um, I graduated from IIT Medical School in 1998, and I'm working as a uh, lead hospitalist at St. Norfolk General Hospital. Hello, my name is Nato Neparidze. I graduated from IIT Medical School in 2000. Uh, currently, I'm working in the United States um, at the Yale University section of hematology and medical oncology as a professor in hematology. 25 years later, IIT remains the only medical institution in the region whose program is solely structured based on the American medical license requirements. Today, IAT is part of David Tvildiani Medical University, named after its first dean, academician David Tvildiani. Other parts of the DTMU include the Medical Residency Program, the Medical Doctorate Program, School of Public Health and the International College of Nursing. Over 200 international students from 11 countries across the globe are peacefully united at the DTMU with one major mission in common to become highly qualified, skillful doctors. Just recently, a new DTMU campus was opened in the city of Rustavi, 25 kilometers away from Tbilisi. The campus is located in a clean, quiet district of the city, next to the gorgeous valley of the Mtukvari River, and is adjacent to a huge recreational area. The finest education will be available on campus for our foreign students, from renowned professionals in the medical field. The campus will also provide students with affordable living, healthy meals and various facilities for sports and other activities. In other words, the environment provided on the new campus, with its classrooms, auditoriums, a contemporary library and infrastructure, create the perfect conditions for students to learn and to live in. So after my graduation, I'd like to go back to India and continue with my career and uh, hopefully help, uh, hopefully be a good doctor and help the world in whatever way I can. 
After I graduate from here, I would like to go back to India, clear my MCI, and become a very successful doctor. I am very grateful to pursue my uh, to pursue my career as a doctor, and I would like to take this opportunities to thank all the teachers who have guided me and helped me to be better each day. If you want to pursue this compassionate career and desire to earn a high quality education with an internationally acclaimed degree, then join us at the DTMU. We will provide you with all the needed conditions and guide you on your way to conquer the peaks and pits of modern medicine.